party people in the house we got tonight. Party people in the house. Yeah, Welcome right. back to the weekly comment. I am Tamara Conniff. And I am Jonathan McHugh. And today we have composer Ryan Shore, whose recent project, the video game Spy Hunter, will be talking about that and many other things. And it's a it's like a really like badass driving He's game. Kind of a badass. Which kid. I love driving yeah, games, so I'm kind of chick. I'm kind of obsessed. From way with back that. in the day. Yeah, you know, way back. But first, we actually have one of my favorite artists. Uh, she's a singer, she's a songwriter. She also founded a movement called I Am. She's going to play an original song for us. Please welcome Lissa Loria. Take it away, girl. You always said I'd be the last one. Show, but now let's please welcome Ryan Shore welcome, to the friend. Comic Couch. Thank you so much. Good to see you again. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So thrilled to have you here. It's an honor to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. So you guys were talking uh, backstage before. You know, you've done mostly features, and this is your first video game, Spy Hunter. What are some of the differences? How is it different for you or challenges on, on doing the music for this? Well, I found scoring Spy Hunter to be very musically liberating. Because on a, on a movie, you often are uh, scoring for dialogue. So in a way, music can almost be a little incomplete in the sense that it might not have a melody where the dialogue functions as the melody. Or uh, the music may be more of an accompaniment. And that's what is appropriate for a movie. But in the video game, I was able to write without thinking at so much about timings and thinking about uh, working around dialogues. So I was able to make the music much more developed. You know, I could really write melodies and I could write very uh, detailed uh, treatments underneath that. So it was, it was a lot of fun to do it. 
And this is a reboot of the 80s driving game. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So cool. <laughs> so cool. You're a driving game kind of guy? Love. So this love is something that games. you could see yourself doing more of also. I, I Absolutely. I would love to do more games. So mix it up with features and games and go back and forth. Yeah. You know, I, I've been following games and I play games and, I, and my interest has been very steadily growing over the years. And when this project came up, it just felt like such a good fit, you know, based on what the director, the producers were looking for, what kind of music they wanted, and, and, uh, and I, it, for me, musically, it delivered, you know, everything that I was hoping to be able to do, and, I, and I'm really looking forward to doing more. But Features is like where you, kind of your heart, I mean, it's kind of where you come from. Um, I yeah, know you started talk about working how you cut with... your teeth. It's kind of a great story. Yeah. Uh, well, I started music when I was 11, took up the saxophone, and I uh, was very active with all the playing of the instruments through high school and college. I went to Berklee College of Music, and I mostly was just playing. I was playing saxophone and clarinet and flute and piano, and I majored in film composing, but ironically, I didn't really get really ex into composing until I graduated, and I my original plan after graduating was to move out here to Los Angeles and I was starting to make plans with some buddies of mine to get a U-Haul and come on out here and, and I ended up getting a phone call from my, uh, my uncle, uh, Howard Shore, who uh, offered me one day... Super famous composer, by the way, everybody. Did a couple movies. Like, yeah, he, incredible. And, and he offered me uh, a one day of employment. And he called me up and he said, you know... It's a starter package, huh? Yeah. It, I, th I think his, his wording uh, was, uh, why don't you come over to my office and, uh, and you'll see how you like it. Wow. And, and I didn't know a lot at the time, but I did know enough that he probably meant, why don't you come to my office and I'll see how I like you. Right. Right. If you're much of a pain in the butt, you're out. Right. So one, one day turned into two and into and a You week. all never got packed up. Yeah, and I ended up moving to New York, and I worked uh, for Howard for four years. And you worked in some pretty incredible films with him. It, it was an incredible experience. I mean, it, I think I worked on maybe about a dozen movies with Howard. Dog, dogma. Dogma, orchestrated with right. Howard, and Analyze This, I orchestrated. Right. Um, and I uh, also worked on The Game. And it was, it was an incredible experience, because I had just studied all of this in college for four years where, where in a way everything is very hypothetical and then, right. you, and then you get to, to sure. be in an environment where it's actually happening and suddenly you never have to ask questions like well would they do this in the real world you know it's like you're, you're actually on a movie and it's happening right, right. the wonders so, of college right? so there what it happens is. in the real world there it is it's happening so that you know I wouldn't have to ask questions like that and you spread out on your own you know, yes. you, were, you were nominated for a Grammy for The Shrine, yes. which is a really big deal. Thank Again, you. Again, it's all about being nominated, right, Kier? It's an honor to be nominated. It's an it, honor to be nominated. Winning's a lot better, though, <laughs> but an honor to be nominated. It was an, it was quite an amazing honor to be uh, nominated. So what's next for you? What, can you um, what else are you working on that you can tell us about? Uh, well, if I could, actually. Please. Uh, I wanted to give you guys something. Uh -oh. Ooh, we you got love swag? Gifts. Is, is it okay to give you swag? Gifts? Is good. Gifts. All right. <laughs> we have rules and regs against swag. We don't. We have no rules. I we love t shirts. I'm giving both of you Spy Hunter oh, t shirts. Wow, that's cool. Oh, and super cool. copies Woo. of the game itself. Oh, nice. My kid, oh, oh my my kid will be a fan of this. PlayStation Yay, he likes that. I love driving games. I didn't mention that yet. Thank now, you as long so as people much. don't get really a lot of people don't get killed, killed, I can give it to my kid. That's yes, okay. please, this is please super do. Cool. Please do. What I so, really want is my own theme in my own car, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, I, 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 <laughs> will, I would like to write old school, <laughs> old school retro business there. Thank you so much. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank and you the so game, much. Uh, it's my just, pleasure. Looks like it's gonna be a good one. Everyone ten and up. I like that. Yeah, my kids can do that. But I still want to know what you're working on. Yes. Well, at the moment, I am. I just finished two new songs for Sesame Street. <gasps> Well, so hopefully, if that Romney gets elected, they'll, they won't get on the air. Yeah, I know, I know. I, I know. <laughs> so if you, you want his songs on. Sesame Street. <laughs> really? When? I was on Sesame Street. It's when a, you were a small child? Or no, a large child? I was an adult. Was it with your dad? No, they picked me up up the street. Wow. It's a, it's a crazy story that I will tell some other time. I'll yeah? tell you backstage. But I was actually on Sesame Street because they chose me off a street corner in the really? East Village. They're like, we need a blonde on Sesame Street. Wow. Interesting. But. 
your songs too. That's two, a really big deal. Songs. That was a lot of fun. It was also kind of funny because you know I was working with the the heads of music at Sesame Street, and they were playing the examples of things that they like. And Sesame Street's been on. I mean, how many years has Sesame Street been? Since on? the beginning of time. Yeah, and so they would play examples of like some of the best songs that have ever been written for Sesame Street over like the last 40 years. And they're like, we like these. And, You're like, that's great. And I'm like, do it like that. I, I love those too. <laughs> you know, Just make something as good. <laughs> right. It's almost like you know, well, we like songs. You know, could, 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 we like the song Let It Be and Hey Jude. Wow. Like, why don't you just do that? You're like fantastic. Yeah, those are easy songs to do. Yeah, you can make something like wow. that. Wow. So, uh, so you get a lot of diversity in your world. Yeah, and at the moment I'm, I'm scoring a new TV show for Disney. It's an What's animated it show. I actually, I can't oh, say. NDA. He's on oh, NDA. Yeah, it's he's it's an NDA. He doesn't play around. I didn't, I, yeah. Next time we'll have him on when well, the show comes you out. Well, please, please let us know what happens with Sesame Street. I absolutely And will. you are now part of the Weekly Comet, so you're welcome back anytime. It was such an honor having you on. And thank, thank you. you for the Thanks gift. for the swag, my man. Thank you so and much. And please, everyone, we will be right, right back. Right, sure, everybody. With Lisa Loria. But first, we're going to take a quick break. Thank you. Hi, my name is Donna Caddick. Hello, this is Marcellus Wiley. Peace and blessings. I am Michael Bernard Beckwith. Hi, this is Virginia Madsen. Hi, my name is Eric Roberts. Hi, I'm Liza Richardson, and you're watching The Weekly Comet. Secrets of the Red Carpet. Life Bites Live. MDBOD on EmpowerMe.TV. On EmpowerMe.TV. Welcome to EmpowerMe.TV. <laughs> I can't cure MS, but there are things that I can do to impact how I feel every day. You got to get busy with it. Vision without action is a fantasy, and action without vision is chaos. What you're wearing affects how you move, how restricted or not you are. Life is a good thing. It doesn't have to be always so trying. We're back. Please welcome Lissa to the couch. Welcome. It here. is such a pleasure to have you on the show. That song is beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Please tell me um, that that's going to be on your upcoming full length. Definitely, right? yeah. I actually wrote it with um, the person who's playing guitar, Justin Gray. We wrote it together, and um, he produced it, and so it will definitely be on the album, for sure. Yeah, and I know you're working on the album right now. Uh, yes. How many, and you're... I think you told us it got a little dub, it's got a little... Yeah, um, the album has a little bit of everything. It has some soul in it, it has um, a lot of live instruments because I think it's really important to have in an album, and uh, it has dub under it because I'm a huge dub fan. So it will have something for everyone, I think, but it's going to be blended really nicely. And you've been producing yourself, or you working with other producers? No. Wow. Wish I was that cool. <laughs> Do not produce myself. My home One studio, day. everything would be like, run that bridge. <laughs> there would be like Garage Band Central. No. Um, <laughs> I work with a lot of different producers, and um, just trying to get the right feel to everything. I think the most important thing is how people will feel when they listen to it, and I want them to feel empowered and feel good and feel like they can relate to what I'm singing. So. That's definitely the most important thing. Well, empowering is something that you are very good at. And I, I could, we talked about this earlier. You know, I certainly had my experiences in grammar school and with bullying yeah. and all sorts of stuff. And also just as a young girl, Absolutely. kind of what you deal with. And your I am movement is extremely powerful. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. So it, tell um, us a little bit about it. it. A lot of it was personal experience. Um, when I was younger, I was not the prettiest girl, as <laughs> you say, I, I didn't even have full teeth. I was missing all my front teeth looking like a vampire before it was cool to be a vampire. Like, this was pre-Edward Cullen, right, so, so missed, I was just straight dork. Vampire, I had vampire right. teeth, I was straight actually. dork. I had to have braces because I had teeth. I did have yeah, that, no, too. That was, was the next it was awkward bad, phase. It was bad. Yeah, it was like, hey, oh my god, I got teeth, and now I need braces. Cool. Now it's another whole, you know, five years of that. Um, yeah, so I had a lot of insecurities growing up. I never felt like I was beautiful. I never felt like I could even sing. I never believed in myself. 
And one of the most important things in my life was believing that I am perfect the way God made me. And that's why the I am movement, that is their staple. That's, you know, what we say. And it's because I believe that if you think that, then, you know, you can achieve anything. I think it's so important if you believe in yourself and you think that you are great, then there's nothing that you can't do. And that's why I really want to push that message, especially against the media and against um, girls feeling like they aren't good enough and eating disorders and cutting and suicide and those rates are so high and they keep going higher and those statistics are off the charts you know every 15 minutes in america someone commits suicide to me that's just that's Crazy. insane that's that's too much of people not loving themselves and so that's why i feel like this message is so crucial for right now and, and for my generation and even older so you work to build up self-confidence of the people out there absolutely um we have something on the site called the pledge and basically what the pledges are these daily things you say i am beautiful i am strong and I actually, I post it up on my own mirror because it helped me reading it every day and saying it every day, helped me kind of reprogram my mind to believe these things about myself to where I started saying, hey, I am beautiful. I am, I am smart. I am, those little things reinforce confidence that I didn't have before. And that's why it's such a great thing to be able to see it and say it. And it's something where, you know, kids, even as young as you know, 10 can go and it's simple. They could say it and they could feel better about themselves because of it. I was talking to your mom earlier, who's like the most awesome manager on the planet. <laughs> My I mom is super proud. Wait, hold on, let's talk about that. For I a love second. your mom, but um, you know, we were talking earlier about how, for me, and I think for a lot of kids that age, just one thing can change your whole world. Yeah, just like it can. the support from one person Absolutely. to say you are beautiful or you are perfect the way God yeah. made you can change the direction you take in your life. It really does. There was a girl, I went to The Grove in LA and um, I talked to, I, I wanted to talk to people because I feel like online is great, but at some point I wanted to see what they really felt if I came face to face with them. And so I went up to this girl and I say, you know, what do you think your biggest insecurity, what do you think the biggest insecurity is that girls face? And uh, she said image, she said because it was the media. And I said, okay, well, can you say I am beautiful? And she looked at me and she started crying. And she said, I, I can't say that. And she said, I'm not. And I was like, but you are. You're, you're so beautiful. And just to get her to say that, was that, it was easier for her to say, I'm ugly, than it is, I am beautiful. And that's when I realized, oh my God, if we could just get them to say it and get them to believe it, that it could make such a difference. Right. It's a beautiful sentiment. Yeah. So back to the mom thing for a second. Yes. So your mom is your manager. Mom is my manager. Talk about that dynamic. Because <laughs> there's always that you know interesting She's, thing with a teenage yeah, daughter. I mean, daughter and her. Everyone mom. says I'm a mini her. Mm -hmm. So if you can imagine my like over the topness and her over the topness, it's just like constant. Hey, what's up? So mm -hmm. it's it's a lot of that. Um, we obviously butt heads like most mother and daughters do, but at the end of the day, she's my best friend, and so it's great to have that support there and to have someone, like you said, we were talking about moms are the ones who will be honest with you. They will always tell you the truth, even when you do not want to hear it. Yeah. And even when they first tell you, and you're like, uh-uh, that's yeah. not it. They will always say the truth, mama. and they're always right. They're always right. They are always right. They're always right. Even if your friends say something different, your mom is probably yeah, right. Yeah, your mom's right. She's your gonna, mom is she's right. She's going to get the top vote. It's yeah. true. It's true. So you recently had a song, Famous. Yes. Uh, in a great new uh, independent film coming up called Beyond the Mat. Yes. Uh, through Mark Hopka, who's an actor and yeah, producer yeah. of the film. How did uh, how that um, all come about? Mark Hopka is a really good friend of mine, and um, he was he's one of the stars of the film. And he called me because he heard Famous, the song I did. It's very dancey and poppy. Um, it's just a fun song. And he said they needed a song for a party scene, and he asked her I wanted to put the song in there. And so that's how it happened. But the well, movie, I saw the preview, well. looks so movie's, sick. Movie's very I'm strong. really excited to very see it. Film. It looks awesome. Yeah. I'm definitely going to see it for sure when it comes out. That'd be great. And I'm going to get excited when I hear the song. Well, <laughs> please keep us posted on what's happening with your full length. I will. And you will play another song for us. Yes. What are you going to play? Your dad inspired this for me, Ray Conniff, because oh. um, I'm a huge fan of his. Thank but you. But he had a version of Killing Me Softly. And it was so beautiful, him and the singers, that I wanted to sing that song kind of in honor oh, of him special. doing it. Well, I have no, you have no idea. Like, I, I, I heard you in rehearsal, and it, it made me tear up. And, oh, God. Um, I mean so much. And how much it, it means to me. And I was, I was telling you earlier, you know, t tomorrow, actually, it, it marks 10 years since I lost oh, him. Passing. Wow. So it's like so this is sort little of little like a timing. bizarre yeah. timing and such a tribute. And, and I can't even tell you, like, from the bottom of my heart and... Oh. From my mama too. Like, thank you. I'm, really, I'm honored to do it. I'm so excited. So. All right, I'm getting emotional myself. <laughs> All right, so. I forgot the tissues. I oh. know, I know. We gotta get tissues. <laughs> so, Lisa Lowry is gonna. So, do take it away, girl. Get out awesome. the thank, thank you. Okay. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you. Out.
just like, I can't even tell you, like it really is emotional for me. Well, that song I remember, it was one of, when I was a kid, that was a fantastic well, and hit, just, hit song. Oh yeah, and it's just... It was in just, a big movie. Uh, it's it just, Clint, Clint movie, it's just beautiful. Yeah, it's a great song. And how. Hi, my name is Jason Kramer, and we are going to do the pick of the week here on the Weekly Comet. First up, I want to talk about an artist that has taken about 10 years to make his new album. It is called, uh, the song of the album is actually Landing on 100. It's a new album by Cody Chestnut. Now, he was best known for an album that came out, like I said, 10 years called Headphone Masterpiece, right? Now, this album was amazing. This was a double disc album. It was a four track thing filled with a lot of Cody's music that he pretty much did in his own bedroom. Now, The Roots, remember that band? Well, they have a song called The Seed Part 2 that originally came from Headphone Masterpiece and guess what? It became a huge hit. Now Cody's back. It's been 10 years once again with a brilliant album that's about his life. Once again, Cody Chestnut with an album called Landing on 100 that comes out October 30th. Do get that one. Also, and finally, Kanon. Now, Kanon had an album that came out in Troubadour called in 2009. He has a new release called Country God and or The Girl that comes out on October 16th on Octone A&M Records. It is part of Universal as well. It's an all-star collaboration of artists that are on this brand new release. This is an album to make a fuss about. Bono, Will I Am, Nas, Keith Richards, and a few other little surprises on this record. I love Kanon so much. He put on a record with J. Period. J. Period's a DJ in New York called The Messengers. The Messengers was an album that never really was released. It's a it's a thing that's out on J. Period's his own little website. And the thing about this is it's Bob Dylan, Fela Kuti, and also Bob Marley. And what both of those guys said, that these guys are messengers. They're not prophets, but messengers, and they have a story to be told. So if you hop on a J. Period's website, you will get that as well, and that's part of Kanon's thing. Once again, Country God and or The Girl comes out October 16th on Octone Records. My name's Jason Kramer. Hit me on the Twitter at KCRW Kramer. I will see you on the flip side.